Here is an IPTV and video on demand receiver from back in the days when TVs weren't smart. This is branded as a T Home, T standing for Telekom, which is the biggest German internet provider. It's a Model X301T, Dolby Digital, HDMI, have a power button right there. Right here is space for a display, have some cursor buttons, OK, return, menu, and a USB jack over there. On the back, we have HDMI jack, 10100 Ethernet, SCART in and out, audio output, composite and super video, reset button, digital audio output, another USB jack. Two antenna inputs and outputs for DVB-T digital television. And over here we have a power connector and a remarkably clunky power switch. Now, this thing is a recent dump find. Now, I have absolutely no use for this thing. So, we're going to tear it apart. I would expect this to contain a hard disk drive, and also, looking at this case, I think I should be able to repurpose this for a little project. I removed the three Torx screws holding the top cover in place, so I should now be able to just, uh, well, not slide this off, but I can pull it off, okay. And here is the inside. So, looks like three main components. There is the power supply, and this, thankfully, is one of these power supplies that has each and every connector properly labeled. So, the chances are pretty good that I'll be able to repurpose the power supply for something else. Uh, over here is the main board. Here is the processor chip, and then up here we have inside this uh, cage the hard disk drive. Now, I don't know what's... Uh, yeah, there is another circuit board behind the front panel. And there is the faceplate taken off. It's all plastic, held in place just with a couple of clips all around. So, not very high quality. Uh, one nice thing though, all the cables connecting to this are socketed, so I can pull those out like so. And we can see, yep, there is, there is actually two circuit boards. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Let's continue with getting the most important component out of here. Most important if it does still happen to work. The hard disk drive. So, unplug that. It's just, just a standard IDE, unfortunately. Hard disk drive. I'd love to find a device that actually contains a SATA hard disk drive, but oh well. Beggars can't be choosers. There are two more Torx screws. And then this cage. It's sort of... Uh, it's just held in place. It just uh, goes through some holes in the faceplate in this uh, sub-chassis. So, yep, that's the hard disk drive taken out. And it is a Western Digital and... 160 gigabytes. Let's take a look around this motherboard. Uh, let me first get this cable out of the way. Is this? Yep, it is a standard IDE cable. So, there is the uh, Sigma Designs Multi-HD processor. Uh, there is four seemingly identical ICs surrounding it, so I would assume those are the RAM chips. This chip is different, so that uh, might be a ROM chip. We have uh, one, two, three crystals surrounding the processor. Up there is even a uh, like a CMOS backup battery. This and this used to connect to the front panel. 
Uh, around here in the back, I guess all these ICs will be associated with the inputs and outputs. In fact, uh, right here next to the Ethernet port, we have a little Realtek chip, so that's what handles the internet connection, along with a crystal. Uh, over here, this is kind of interesting, we have some, uh, what looks like some relatively high power transistors and a little coil and a lot of dust. This could be like a switch mode power supply, it's right next to this USB jack, which is interesting if they are creating the 5 volts for the USB jack locally, with a local regulator, because right here, this is this is your standard color coding. Red is 5 volts, yellow is 12 volts, and black is ground. And then right here we have the two tuner modules for the DVB-T tuner. I guess that's it for this uh, main board. Oh, and let's not forget, once again, it's held in by Torx screws. The main board is, of course, a double-sided board. This is the underside. There is not a whole lot going on down here. I don't see any more ICs. This row of transistors all along the Scott Jack is a bit funny. Anyway, so that's the underside. Here is the faceplate. Let's not forget about that. Uh, turn that around. You've already seen two circuit boards in there. This one just clips in place like that. This contains the USB jack and it just uh, just loops through to this connector, so I'll definitely be able to use this entire module for something. Uh, this is all screwed in, so let me get those screws out. Let's see what we have on this. Ooh, nice vacuum fluorescent display. <laughs> it seems like, I guess I just got a part that uh, was also available for other products, because look at that. AM FM. I'm pretty sure this doesn't have an AM FM tuner in there. Okay, so there is that thing. And then have a bunch of uh, just your standard momentary push buttons. There is the remote control sensor. And uh, yeah, this, this one's kind of interesting. This is a momentary push button, but it has a tiny little LED integrated into it. That's interesting. Look at that. There is an LED. On the back of the unit, uh, nothing special. That's going to be the display controller. I'm not sure what's up with that. Might have... Uh, yeah, it's kind of close to the remote control sensor, so it might be for the remote control. And all that's left over now is the power supply. So, this... Um, Looks like this was made by a company called ENG Electric. As I already said, it's all nicely labeled. So uh, yellow is 12 volts, red is 5 volts, and black is ground. This went to the main board. This went to the hard disk drive. As you can see, there is one unoccupied pin right there. And on the board, it says minus 12 volts. So I guess these unoccupied spaces there would have been for a minus 12 volts section. Up here, this went to the front panel. This has some interesting stuff on there for the vacuum fluorescent display. We have minus 30 volts SB. Not sure what that could be. Like a cathode voltage, something like that. I don't know the... Uh, terminology for tubes and essentially the vacuum fluorescent display is a tube. Ground we have uh, FL stands for filament so that is the filament voltage probably just a few volts and then another ground and five volts. And we have even more Torx screws holding this in place. And I have a feeling my Torx screwdriver doesn't fit these screws properly because it's a pain to get them out. And finally, the power supply is ready to come out. And 
Oh yeah, that is nice. You can clearly see where the primary is divided from the secondary. That's a nice power supply. And the screws are back in, including the annoying Torx screws. So let's plug in a power cable, turn on power, and turn on the power switch. Nothing's exploded, that's good. Ooh, I hear something squealing in there. Yeah, something in there is squealing really bad. Well, do we even get a voltage output? Let's see. Oh, there is 12 volts. Let's see, that should be 5 volts. A little bit low. Let's measure on this connector up here. Uh, this, yeah, there should be another 5 volts there. And it's a bit low. And then, okay, that should be the filament. Let's see what the filament does. Uh, film, is that AC? That would be interesting. Oh, it is. About uh, almost eight volts AC. Hmm, interesting. How do they create AC in a switch mode power supply? Interesting. Okay, and then I think the yeah final one is this uh, minus 30 volts. So let's see what that does. Minus 28. Okay. But it's still squealing. I don't like that. Why is it squealing? Right, power supply is off. Let's plug in the hard disk drive once again. Maybe the squealing is just because there is no load and the power supply can't properly regulate. Yep, I guess that's what the problem was. Of course, now the hard disk drive is going to make one hell of a lot of noise but I definitely can't hear any more squealing. Let's, uh, let's double check the voltages and see. Yeah, see, now the five volts is almost five volts. So I guess this power supply does require a minimum load to be able to regulate things properly. Let's see, that's still 12 volts. Okay, so keeping in mind that it does need a minimum load, I'd say this power supply does work. And that's it. That's the IPTV receiver completely disassembled. So I have another useless IDE cable. Oh well. Uh, these two circuit boards, unfortunately, they are double-sided circuit boards, and I don't have the tools to unsolder anything from these. I'll either end up overheating the component or ripping it off. So, unfortunately, there is nothing I could salvage off of here, except for the battery, but that is probably just going to be half empty. Oh well, I took it anyways. So these two, unfortunately, will have to go into the trash. We have this USB jack circuit board. That's going to be useful for something. We have the hard disk drive, which I will test to make sure that it works properly before I put any data on there. And then we have this whole entire case including this uh, hard disk drive thing with the 5 volt and 12 volt power supply. So this can be recycled and used for a new project. So that's it. Thank you for watching.